Hi, this is Gregor from Basteball.com and this video will be about one of my favorite base builders, Nikola Adamovic from Adamovic Bases. One of my jobs is testing bases for a German magazine and one day they sent me a six string Adamovic uh, base. Uh, I'm not really a six string guy, but this base was just outstanding good. A single cut, so you can imagine, was kind of a huge base, but uh, it weighed nothing, less than four kilos. And it sounded just amazing, as fresh, as funky, as usually only four string basses can sound. Uh, long story short, I was sold to this base and I started to write Nicola to find out more about his concepts and what makes his basses so special. After a few months of writing back and forth, he invited me to his workshop in Harlem, which is a nice little city close to uh, Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And I've learned a lot over there, but before we go into details, let me introduce Nicola and let's have a look at the different Adamovic designs. Every um, base we design we have is different size, different shape, um, and different ergonomics. So we have, for instance, the the, the halo. It's an all-round medium-sized base for the more average person. Uh, the Jupiter is a smaller sized uh, base for the smaller person or somebody who is looking for a compact base. The Saturn is more vintage oriented uh, with a bolt on uh, neck and a little bit more vintage feel. And then we have the Eclipse that's uh, usually designed for, uh, for a fretless base with an elongated fretboard. And we have the uh, Supernova, which is a little bit bolder uh, instrument, but actually very ergonomic design, sitting or, or standing. When you hear Nicola talking, you will recognize quickly that his bases are built around ergonomic ideas. While the most other luthiers concentrate on beautiful wood tops and fancy electronics, Nicola sets his goal much more in things like balance and perfect playability. Here are some things he's doing, shown on a halo base. First of all, it has a carved back. It goes like this, following your body, and like this. And this shape makes it uh, very snug to your body, so it doesn't move around in any direction, like this, like this, or like this. Uh, this means it, it's very stable on your body, and you can put it the way you like it, low, high, and it will stay the way you want it, even if you let go of both of your arms. What we also did is for single cut designs, we have a unique um, attachment of their neck to the body where there is no heel actually. So when you're playing a bass, you don't notice it's a single cut because there is no thicker body making the neck thick and chunky. So if you play your playing hand like this, then you will feel the difference to all the other single cut designs immediately. When Nicola started building basses, he was also working part time at a wood shop. His job there was to identify woods and he was always focused on finding rare and special woods that eventually could give some interesting tone woods. From this work he brought a huge knowledge into his base building concepts and when you're going through his stock, especially his uh, so-called private wood collection, you will rarely find woods you're familiar with. It's a bit crazy, I always thought I have kind of an advanced knowledge about uh, woods for instruments, but Nicola made me realize that I know almost nothing. Or have you ever heard about Guayuba or Solernia? And these are some of the most common used uh, woods in his workshop. And it's not just about the type of woods he's using that, but that sets him apart from, from all the other builders I know. It's also the way he treats them. One of the important things that I've done with you is our wood selection process. Uh, we don't just buy wood uh, like a big pile and use everything uh, like most companies do. E each plank is hand selected. Uh, I go to different uh, wood stores and go through all the woods they have and you know, select the, the best pieces. And what I'm looking for is the, the species, the right species. And if you have a pile like this, uh, I will go to most of it just to find the best piece. If I'm looking for wood for necks, I need the straight grain, uh, the right uh, weight. So I will take every plank and just flip it, look at it, uh, how, see how straight it is, uh, you know, just to take the best pieces uh, for my next. And that's just, just the first step of the selection process. When we buy wood, we buy wood that's 
actually completely dry and ready to be used, but we don't use it immediately. Uh, we have a long process. It starts um, with cutting the wood into smaller pieces. And when you, when you cut wood, you see immediately if there is any tension in the wood itself. Because when you cut it and it, goes and it bends or twists, uh, these uh, pieces are not, bad, uh, not usable. We throw them away. After that, we'll, we let them dry another six months minimum. And after these six months, we uh, cut them down to smaller pieces, the neck laminates. And there is another selection process where we only use the completely straight uh, pieces. And these laminates are now close to their our, um, final shape and, and size. Uh, and we let them sit um, again for six months to a year to see if any will warp or move or twist and these are also thrown away. So we, when we make our neck blanks, we only use the laminates completely straight without any tension. And we also do not, do not use uh, water-based glue because we do not want to add any water or humidity into wood we have been drying for almost three years. So the neck blanks, when they are glued, they are glued only from the perfect pieces. And we still let the neck blanks sit around for six months minimum until the customers can select the, the neck blank they want. And so we can ensure that once the necks are built, they do not have any wood in there that has tension. And this results in very stable necks uh, that can travel with you around the world without any problems. What this means is you can't simply order an Adamovich base to your favorite specifications. Well, well you can, but uh, then you have to wait at least three years to get it in your hands. Nicolas is very selective and not only about his, uh, the woods he's using for his bodies and the necks, but also about the parts he's using. And if you've ever seen a custom shop order form from any company that's uh, specialized on building high-end bases, you will mostly see huge lists of, with tons of options of woods and, 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 and uh, hardware like bridges and tuners and pickups and electronics and everything. And when you check the Adamovich order form instead, this is kind of a short list compared to the other ones, at least. Um, there's a very limited amount of options and first I thought this is a bad thing because you really, you know what's good and you want to have your stuff, but um, when he explained me what you will hear in a minute, I, I learned to understand that this might be a, a good idea. I really like this approach. Over the last um, 11 years I have been building a base, I've experimented a lot of with different um, and pickups, different hardware, different electronics, and uh, we actually stuck to just a few brands we use. The advantage of this is that we can uh, predict the sound of the bass by choosing the wood and the construction, because I know exactly how our pickups sound, I know what the preamp does, and I also know uh, the hardware and how it, re it reacts with the wood. So limiting the choices of the these pickups, electronics and uh, hardware makes it for me possible to shape the sound for a customer by choosing the right wood. Uh, the pickups we use are made by Harry Heusel uh, from Germany. Uh, they're a little bit different than usual. They use samarium cobalt magnets. Um, these are very powerful magnets. Um, but the result is a pickup that has a huge uh, bandwidth uh, from the very low frequencies to the very high frequencies, very uh, level. There are no peaks in, in, in frequencies. So it's very uh, good for a studio uh, uh, environment where the studio engineer can shape the sound he wants because everything is there, every frequency. We design basses to sound perfect in passive mode. Uh, there are acoustic instruments, although they are electric and amplified, but I'm looking for the exact sound the customer is looking for when it's plugged in in a pa passive mode. Uh, we add the preamps just to have more versatility. Uh, we use three different preamps. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, the Null preamp from Klaus Null from Germany. They are a very modern sounding, a little bit aggressive. The other brand is Glockenklang. Uh, they're very clear sounding, very natural sounding. You really hear the bass itself, the passive sound. If you're looking for the most natural sound for your bass, uh, the Glockenklang is the, 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 the great match. And a recently developed uh, preamp with John East uh, from England is a more traditional sounding uh, preamp, more vintage and warm sounding. And the nice part of the East preamp is that it um, 
you can I can choose the frequency of the bass, mids, and treble uh, inside the uh, compartment. So I can shape the bass, the sound of the bass for each customer and fit it to the bass. Another thing we do slightly different than uh, most companies is our fret work. Uh, first of all, we hammer the frets in like uh, most people do, but we completely seal um, the fret slots where the fret is seated in, so there is no chance any moisture can get get into the wood around the fret. Because if moisture gets under the fret, it can raise the frets a little bit and it can give you some fret buzz. The other thing we do is we round each fret end. We round them completely smooth. Um, that's pretty unique, um, but it also costs a lot of time. Each fret end costs several minutes, like five to six minutes to, to dress. And we have 48 fret ends. Um, so it's l very time com consuming, but the result, the result is a very smooth edge of the fingerboard. It's, it feels like the bass was played for many decades. And it's a small detail, but it really helps the bass feel more comfortable. These are just a few facts about Adamovich basses and if you want to learn more uh, just visit his website uh, which is adamovich.nl and I've made uh, some more videos because the material we re recorded was like a couple of hours and I made some more shorter videos which are uh, now available on his uh, YouTube channel so if you're into all this stuff you might want to check these out as well. The trip to Nicolas workshop was an eye-opening event for me and it was great. Everything I, I thought I would know about building bases the right way was just getting crushed by <laughs> such a giant when it comes to all these little details and it's good when that happens from time to time just to get back on the floor. The outstanding quality of these instruments and his approach to all the details, especially the small ones that even a lot of high-end builders often kinda ignore or don't even think about it. Um, this is what, in my opinion, really sets his bases apart. And of course, as you can see, I couldn't hesitate. This is my lovely Halo 5-string fretless, just a wonderful bass. Um, if you have more questions about Adamovich, about all the stuff he or I've talked about, uh, just ask in the comment section. I will gladly answer you as far as I can. And uh, well, that's it. See you next time and uh, have a great day. Thank you.